Hey everyone, Kurt here. Today I'm going to be talking about something that can change the way that you do jump training. That's right, the way we do jump training right now is typically done like to a box or something, but there's a product out there. There's a new ish kind of product really this range of products has been out for a long time but today we're talking about the ovr jump which for under 300 dollars can absolutely revolutionize the way that you track your jump performance and have carryover to all sorts of different parts of your life whether it's athletic performance or just not falling on your butt on the ice as i alluded to earlier the benefits of jump training are absolutely massive and really i'm not even capturing all of them if you go on any sort of like publication you can find all sorts of articles about how jump training can help you with athletic performance it can help you with just kind of slips trips and falls and really jump training is one of those things that really trains that fast twitch muscle fiber that so many of us actually want to keep sharp as we get older traditionally you've had to buy like massive pieces of equipment so for instance you would have to go spend thousands of dollars and you'd have to buy this large piece of equipment if you're a coach and you would jump and you'd like hit the sticks I think we all probably did that in high school there's jump mats that you can buy that measure ground contact time and then you even have like all the way up to the thousands of dollars to get force plates but nobody has that kind of resource whether it's space or money when it comes to home gym and really this is a revolutionary way and i know i keep saying that but like this is an absolutely game-changing way to take all of those sensors and put them in two pieces of equipment that are this big. Now I know it might seem like magic, but here's how it works. You have a short bar. This is the emitter, right? So this has basically infrared lasers, lasers that it fires, and it gets set at least four feet away from the receiver, which is right here. Now this is the receiver. I'm gonna turn it on and we can see that we have red lights. And this is just looking at those infrared beams as they come in. And when it sees the beams, it turns green. When the plane is broken, it turns red. That's how you know it's working. And what it does is it waits for whatever's in the field to be in the field and then leave. And it measures the height that you jump. It measures the amount of time that you spend breaking the laser beam path at the ground so it can do your ground contact time. And then the application even has the ability to measure your reactive strength index, which is your ability to jump as quickly as possible. Think jumping into a box, jumping as high as you can, and then landing inside the box to see how much fast twitch muscle fiber activation you're actually getting in that moment. Now with that is going to come certain levels of accuracy. So how accurate is it? Now this will measure to a 10th of an inch. So it measures in like 23.1 inches, 23.2, all the way to 23.9, and then it goes to 24. So it's not uh, inches in like fractions of an inch, it's point inches. Now the accuracy is going to be dependent on a lot of things and this is one of the areas where it kind of compromises but once you understand how it works it actually works insanely well. So for instance if you were to stand and do a max vertical jump and you jump as high as you can and you hit the sticks your body is going to remain constantly the same size like your arm isn't going to grow. Now how far you're able to stretch and how far you get good how, how well you adapt to the test may change but overall you are going to remain the same size, which gives you a very consistent measurement because you jump as high as you can. It doesn't matter what your legs are doing. It doesn't matter what anything's doing. You jump and you hit to a certain height. Now with the lasers, because it's measuring from the bottom up, you can run into some inconsistency issues that have to do with basically what you do with your feet during the jump. So for instance, if you're someone that pulls your feet up when you jump, it's going to measure how high your feet come up during that jump. So if you tuck your knees, you might get like a 40 inch vertical but we all know that you probably don't have a 40 inch vertical now as far as like accuracy goes that's not the problem the lasers are pretty accurate i've been using it for a month they've been consistent they've been accurate they've shown a, a regular progression going upwards as far as my vertical jump and uh, i don't think that the accuracy is a problem as much as the consistency can be something that you just kind of have to adapt to so if you are someone that when you do a max jump, you pull your knees up, just make sure you do it the same way every single time. But I think that for most people, when you do a max vertical jump, you just jump with your legs extended, maybe tuck your toes up, um, and you're gonna develop a lot of technique as far as how you prefer to do a max vertical jump. What's really cool about having this high degree of accuracy in a tool like this is that you're able to track progress over time. So if I was to program max vertical jumps for you and you're just going to jump as high as you can, you might 
you know, feel like you hit a PR because you're able to see something you've never seen before. Maybe you can see the, the, a certain hole on your power rack. Maybe you can see a certain number. Maybe you see over a certain object. And that can be a way to track that you're making progress, but it's really not tracking it and gathering metrics in a way that's productive. And we all know that what gets measured gets managed. This is a tool that can really change the way that you do your job. Over the training. last four weeks, I have been using it literally every single session that I train and the way that I typically do it is 100% based on Michael Fahey's recommendation of I start my session out with, uh, I just do some general warmups, um, nothing groundbreaking, just dynamic style warmups. And then I do four singles with dumbbells in my hand. Um, and I started with uh, 15s and then I went to 20s, 25s, and then 30 pound dumbbells. So basically double that 60. Uh, 50, 40, whatever, right? Math is hard when you're on video. But um, I was able to progress that up. So for the first week, it was the 15s. The second week was the 20s. The third week was the 25s. And the fourth week was the 30s. And then this morning, I actually retested. Now my max vertical jump that I had when I began this four weeks ago was like 25.5 inches, which is actually pretty decent. Like I'm coming close to 40, I'll change 38 next month. Uh, and the fact that I was able to do 25 without really training all that much for jump training, I felt was really good. But a week, I'm sorry, a month later, uh, this morning when I tested, I jumped 29 inches, um, which was phenomenal. And I not only did I do it once, like I jumped 29 and then it was like 28 and then 28 and a half. So I'm doing consistently high jumps. Now, a lot of that is going to be the newbie gains that come with any sort of training modality. So I, I wasn't really doing jump training before, I was jumping to a box, but jumping to the box and doing a max vertical jump are two very different things. Um, but yeah, basically doing four singles with dumbbells in my hand and then doing four sets of four jumps with no dumbbells in my hand and that's it. So we're talking like, I don't know, five to six minutes at the beginning of my workout um, that's just dedicated to jump training. And then after that, I would just roll into my regular workout. And then this morning, I even tried something different. I actually wanted to work on upper body plyometrics. I used to do like clapping push-ups. The whole idea was to be able to recruit fast twitch muscle fiber so that I can have a more explosive upper body press. And uh, I had been doing just like plyometric push-ups before, jumping up to uh, like different foam pads. Like I would take my ab mat crash mats, put them on the ground, and I would, you know, kind of like spread out, go to those and then come back down, push up, go to those and come back down. But with this, I was actually able to track the bottom of my hands. Now there is a minimum value that you have to get to, and it's I think six inches. Yeah, it's six inches that you have to get. So if you can't do a plyometric push-up higher than six inches, that might be a problem. But that six inches is incredibly accessible to literally anybody that's looking to get into jump training because almost everybody can jump six inches. So jump training is beneficial. Like there's no argument there that uh, I don't think anybody can intelligently argue against jump training, but how do the units perform when it comes to battery life? Because when you have something that runs on batteries, and this is two units that both run on batteries, uh, the question's gonna come up, what kind of power life do we have? Now I've been using it for four weeks. When I got them, they were fully charged when they arrived. Even though they were fully charged, I used them for my first session and I went and I plugged them into the wall and I just let them charge. Now, four weeks later, I am still on that exact same charge and uh, the sensors are still picking up fine. The battery meter shows about half of the battery remaining, which I think is pretty good. But when you really think about it, if you're using this for yourself in your gym, there's a high likelihood that you're not gonna be burning through batteries all that much. Because unless you're doing like an entire session of jump training, uh, you don't actually have them on for all that long. Now the portability is another key feature that separates OVR from literally every other version of jump training. This is 18 inches wide, this is six inches wide. They're two inches uh, in this orientation, so like six inches, uh, so I guess it'd be 18 inches long, two inches wide, and just over one inch thick, six again by two inches wide, and just over one inch thick. You do gotta make sure that you protect the infrared plastic windows here, but if I'm being honest, uh, it really has not been a problem. Now there's two options here. You can keep it in the original carrying case, or not carrying case, but the packaging that it comes in, which probably would have been the smartest move for me, 
or what you can do is what I do and it comes with like a shoulder slung bag and I just use the shoulder slung bag if I'm going to take it to say my daughter's softball practice or if I'm gonna take it to work so that we can have like a little measuring contest to see who can jump the highest. The portability is super easy and again the units are super lightweight and they really do a good job of balancing that lightweight to durability uh, you know like kind of ratio. The units are made out of aluminum though so like they could potentially break it's basically aluminum plastic end caps one of the end caps on both of the units has the uh, little slider switch and then the other side has the USB-C charging port that's for each one of these things and so I, I imagine that if you were to like you know drop something on these or if an athlete jumped on it uh, you might have a problem where you run into some durability issues uh, but ultimately when it comes to sensors don't do that when I reviewed the OVR velocity one of the things that I was absolutely fangirling over was the graphic user interface that's inside of the application and with the jump it's the exact same app it's the exact same interface and again I, I just find myself really in love with this app there's a couple reasons for it one I don't run into issues where like the app drops the sensor like that that's never happened over the last four weeks um, I imagine that it might happen someday but cycling power on the sensors might fix it uh, the other thing I like is that it gives you a graphic display so it's not just raw data that comes in sometimes that can be my biggest complaint especially as an end user now as a coach raw data is something that's really valuable but for most home gym owners that are looking to get maybe a jump sensor from OVR performance uh, they're not really wanting the raw data as much as they're wanting like a graphical representation that shows how they're doing over time it tracks their PRs for them and you can also use the app to track whether you're doing so like I have a, a whole vertical jump like exercise built in it's a custom exercise for doing dumbbell jumps with 15 pound dumbbells and then I have another one for 20 25 and then 30 and then I have my just regular vertical jump the other thing I like is that the algorithm inside of the application is really handy for tracking uh, reactive strength index so when you're looking at ground contact time or trying to improve those kind of ground contact time metrics it shows you in real time as you're jumping so you're able to for yourself do several jumps in a row and you can see how you're doing every time and for learning how to reduce ground contact time that's really beneficial because there's a how it feels and then how it really is and the sensor plus the app does a really good job of just showing you how it is and then the reactive strength index is nice because it gives you that number and it's really nice because again like we keep talking about what gets measured gets managed so if you know what your reactive strength index is there's a really good likelihood that you can work to improve it by either jumping higher or reducing your ground contact time in between jumps one case I will make is that I think that based on the price of like a good quality box jump so I'm thinking like an Abmat Ru box for instance uh, I would argue that more people might actually get better use and use space wisely in their gym if instead of getting a Roo box you got like an OVR jump. Now that's not to say that the Roo box is invaluable and the Roo box plus an OVR jump is something that's really handy especially as you do drop-ins so if you're going to do a depth jump and really try to measure your RSI you're going to need something to jump off of and so a box jump is really valuable. But if you're just trying to improve max vertical jump, this tool can work really well and give you metrics, and that's with the app or without the app, because the screen that's on the top of the unit itself shows you, without the application being involved, the numbers that you're doing. But you're able to cycle through and use all the different modes without even having the application involved. But I think that a lot of people, when they're building their gym, a box tends to be a large object that's just kind of in the way sometimes or it ends up being a holder of things similar to like a reverse hyper so I wonder if more people would potentially get a greater benefit from something like a sensor first and then adding a box jump later as they feel that they need it obviously that's going to be sports dependent because if you compete in say CrossFit or you just like to train by doing 20 box jumps a box might be more valuable for you but I think for a lot of people actually getting to a point where you can measure your jump and do it where space is 
absolutely not infringed upon because when it's not used, you just throw it on a shelf somewhere or throw it in the bag and hang it on the wall. It just offers a lot of value. I talked about pricing earlier, but these units are priced at $290, I believe. Um, I'll flash it on the screen if I'm wrong. And uh, the good people over at OVR also offer a discount. So I think it's $290 or $299 and code KL10 saves you 10%. I don't earn any commission from that, by the way. Uh, I was sent these products to review. I wasn't charged for the products, but I don't earn any money if you choose to purchase them or not. But I think that they are super valuable. And with code KL10, it brings it down to $270, which can sound like a lot to some people, but if you really think about what you're getting, I think the value's there, especially when you consider how much it costs to buy a good quality box. Now, if you compared that to what you need to purchase to actually comparably measure the same metrics, it's no contest. The OVR wins every single time. Uh, at $270 after using code KL10, you're literally coming in at like one quarter of the cheaper version of all these sensors because realistically what you would need to do all three of these at a minimum is like a jump sensor that measures ground contact time and then you would need the sticks that you jump up to and those two together come in right under a thousand dollars i'm sure someone could find some cheaper versions out there but there's just a lot of advantages to this especially if you're running multiple athletes through because think about this if you're doing a vertical jump max vertical jump uh if you're holding dumbbells you're not going to be using the sticks to actually hit uh, your height, right? So like if you're doing a weighted vertical jump, you're not gonna hit the dumbbell and then hit the sticks to measure your max vertical jump there. But what these do is it gives you good interset data or intraset data rather, um, so that you know, like let's say that you do your first repetition with dumbbells in your hand and it's a little bit lower than the second set that you did, then you know that you're either fatiguing or you need to change your technique a little bit. So getting that real-time feedback is a real benefit. But let's wrap this up. Do I recommend the OVR jump? Absolutely, yes, 100%. I think that more people benefit from having an OVR jump in their gym than having a box in their gym to begin with. Now you will eventually want to probably add that box later so you can do depth jumps like I talked about, but again, you don't need it. Why do I say that? The price tag is relatively low. I know that $270 might seem like a lot to some people, but you are paying $270 to basically be able to track vertical jump and be able to track your reactive strength index and to really work on ground contact time. So if you're someone that is just an everyday go like gym goer and you're just trying to look better naked, this could be something that when you think about it helps you when you need to like really recruit a lot of fast twitch muscle fiber for lower body or upper body movements. If you're someone that competes in strength sports, this is gonna be even more so something that you probably want in your wheelhouse because it's gonna help you when it comes to recruiting those fast twitch muscle fibers when it matters most, which is in competition. But that's been it for this review. I appreciate you guys that watch every single week. This is the OVR Jump, highly recommend, A+. Thank you for everybody that watches and I'll see you next week.